Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest and welcome to June 24, 2024. We have almost one hour left of trading today. Hope you had a good weekend. I'm a little bit unusual maybe because I actually do like Mondays, many people out there, particularly people who don't like their day jobs, don't like Mondays. Uh, there's that song, uh, I don't like Mondays or something like that. Uh, I actually don't mind Mondays. I like Mondays. Or, however, I am a shift worker, and a lot of times my Mondays might be not the same as your Mondays. Anyway, going on a bit of a tangent here. Are not at the best of days on the market. Looking at the indices up there, but when it comes to announcements today, I did not have any problems finding a top five announcements. In fact, I did leave out a few companies that could have featured in the top five announcements, but it was plain to see after 10 a.m. came along that there was very little doubt which the top five announcements of the day were going to be. I just had to order them, and I just ordered them right now, or just before I started recording, and it was pretty obvious which two companies were going to be number one and number two. I just had to decide which was going to be number one, which was going to be number two. Now, three announcements were quite easy. So the agenda for today's video will be fairly similar than other videos. I do have the possibility of looking at a tweet. I did a couple of tweets today. In fact, I did a three tweets today, I think. Uh, not many people do look at my tweets, but that's okay. And then once I do that, we'll have a look at the ASX today, the best performing and worst performing sectors, indices, and based off uh, what I'm seeing up there, uh, not a good day for quite a few of the sectors. Uh, in fact, um, everything's down by more than 0.5% except tech. And we'll have a look at the best and worst performing companies. Also have a look at the top five announcements. I might touch upon a few other companies that released a few interesting things out there. And then if I have time, I might look at a few charts. I have been a little bit busy today. I have unwound a few of my trading positions because um, I want to I, I want to improve my timing. And I also want to follow a rule where I only invest in companies whose share price is above the, and when I say invest, I mean trade, uh, whose share price is above the 150-day moving average, which means reviewer. I sold out of that company today. Uh, it was up, I think it was 7 or 8% when I sold up, out, which is okay. Um, but you, I'll, have a, I'll show you that chart and I'll show you why I sold out of that company. And I'm also unwinding other positions and I bought into a company today. So I'll show you why I bought into this company today. And I was thinking about buying another company, but actually another two companies. And I'll show you the charts of these two companies. So I'm just writing them down so I don't forget because I'm getting old and my memory sometimes can be, um, well, it's not an age thing. It's my mind goes on different directions. And sometimes I completely forget where my mind was just a few moments before. And my mind can be quite busy at times. Anyway, so let's start this video. We're looking at a tweet. There was a few interesting tweets. This was a really interesting tweet. Got three notifications. I reckon someone has liked or gave my, is it like? Hearted some of my tweets. Anyway, um, this was an email I, re I received uh, or in relation to an email I received from uh, Fraser's Capital Partners. I uh, probably should show you that, uh, that email. And it was an intriguing email about how much this particular um, fund manager has returned in the past year. 80% for the calendar year to date. Calendar year to date, not the a financial year. The calendar year to date, fund returned 32% in May, uh, which combined with the 10% move so far in June has taken us to 80% for the calendar year to date. Had a look at some of their investments because in this particular email, they did reveal some of those investments. I think it was NVIDIA and they unwound their NVIDIA position and a few other really interesting investments uh, for this company. Now, what was interesting about this particular tweet is someone, Miles, the instigator of this tweet, uh, in case anyone was wondering in terms of, here he goes, he asked, I wonder how he did uh, in 2022 and 2023. And this was probably the most permanent thing. So just because a fund manager has done really well in one particular period doesn't mean they do really well over extended period. And that's the reason why I'm not jumping for joy because I've returned 60% in 
in my training portfolio this particular financial year? Can I replicate it over the next few financial years? That's the big question I have in regards to that particular strategy. So here is the Fraser's Fund talking or comparing to the sector average, whatever the sector average is, and it goes all the way back to 2019. And there's been periods of time when this Fraser Fund has done really well and other periods of time when it's done pretty bad, like 2021, 2022, it did really bad. So uh, this company or this fund manager has well, would have been negatively affected by increasing interest rates. But during 2020 or just after or post COVID-19, they did really well. Makes sense. I think they invest in high growth companies and a lot of these high growth companies are not profitable. And I think the big story or the big um, important story or lesson to learn is just because a fund manager has done really well one year doesn't mean that they'll do really well the next year. And I actually do know some people who, uh, I won't say get fooled by that, uh, but they do look at fund managers' performance over a certain period of time, a very short period of time, and then they will switch funds. And switching funds quite often can be, and I'm talking about super funds, can be actually detrimental to your longer term performance because you're switching from a winner who might have only been done well just in one small period and they might do really bad the next month or next year or whatever. Anyway, so that was an interesting tweet. Let's have a look, see, no notifications. Yeah, a few people have liked my tweets. Excellent. Let's go back to look at. Um, Oh, this one, yeah, that's not really investing pertinent. I just like this, how Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy has said women in Star Wars, such as the acolyte showrunner Leslie Headland, struggled due to a male-dominated fan base. And I just have to completely disagree with that. And the best films to disagree with that uh, are James Cameron films, including The Terminator and also Aliens, and both those film series, particularly the first two of either one, were highly successful when the main um, protagonist, yeah, the main protagonist in both films was a strong female lead. And so I do think uh, Kathleen Kennedy is making some excuses for poor quality films, or I haven't seen The Acolyte, but I would say particularly the last two newer Star Wars films were really disappointing. Anyway, uh, for some reason, that uh, tweet got a lot of uh, engagement. Uh, this was another one. I really like this one from Don Johnson. I don't think it's that Don Johnson, uh, although it says Don Miami. Hmm, anyway, for those who don't know, Don Johnson was an actor who starred in a show called Miami Vice. Pretty sure that was in the 1980s. Can't remember who he um, acted that with, but he married... Who did he marry? They'd, um, I forget her name. And they had a daughter, Dakota Johnson, who stars, is also an actress. Anyway, this is from the Wall Street Journal. Uh, suddenly, there aren't enough babies. The whole world is alarmed. I wouldn't say I'm alarmed, but I have mentioned a few times in the past year, this is going to be a serious problem. And the reason why... Automation is extraordinarily important. Now, this could be a saving grace for us. And one of the reasons why we might not go into a significant recession is because most people, uh, it's not that they won't lose their jobs, but there won't be as many people looking for jobs as there are jobs out there because a lot of people are retiring and there's not a lot of people who have been born over the past 20 years who are entering the workforce. And this is going to become an increasing issue moving forward particularly in western countries not only that as non-western countries become more and more educated then the birth rates in these company countries are going to drop and right now the only countries in the world if i remember correctly the only countries in the world that have uh, greater than 2.1 birth rates are in africa and eventually that's going to end as well as they become educated uh and i think I think it was, they were studying Mexico and Iran's birth rates, and those birth rates in those two countries fell from greater than six to below two within two decades. And 2.1, those who don't know, is the important level, because that's um, 
the replacement rate. Anyhow, so no one's having babies. I have had no children. I have never wanted children. And one of the big changes we have seen in the world over the past 100 years is how we raise children. Uh, typically, if you go back 100 years ago, or even more, uh, the raising of children was a family community thing. And then as we became um, global transport, not only global transport, transport within countries became easier and easier. People started to spread out. Families started to separate and raising children actually became harder. Uh, and it was less of a community thing, less of a family thing. Uh, I mean, you hear stories about whole families living together from grandmother, parents, down to the grandchildren. It would have been quite um, hectic and busy, but that's what used to happen. Anyhow, um, going on a bit here. Um, yeah, automation is very important because of this. Unless the governments decide we have to motivate people to have babies. And how are they going to do that? Handouts again? I don't. And what else do we have here? Oh, yeah, this is a, this is great. People worry about um, crashes, and this is the S&P 500, and you barely notice the, barely notice the, what's this one? Barely notice the 60% crash in the markets in 2008. 2008. Yeah, it's just a blip. Just a blip. And I have seen um, some people use that sort of thing as well for the global depression, uh, the 1929 crash in October. Uh, it's just a blip. And eventually the markets recover. So make sure if we do go through a significant blip, you don't sell out completely because that's not when to sell. That's when you should be buying. And yeah, what? A, oh, oh, there we go. Oh, that's from a week ago. Okay, so let's have a look at the ASX today. Uh, this tweet section was a little bit longer than I hoped for. We have to get to the right page. Here we are. So let's have a look at the ASX today, looking at the different sectors, uh, indices, and then we can have a look at the company's specific best and worst performers. So industrials is the only sector up today. Uh, what's in the industrials? Like transurban? Transurban? Um, I'm going to list by market cap, Transurban, Brambles, Reese, Computer Share, Seven Group, Auckland, and all those except Auckland are up. Infotil, Wally, so infrastructure companies there. Uh, I thought maybe, so yeah, there's no infrastructure sector. So infrastructure is industrials. Okay. Uh, IT's had an okay day today, comparatively speaking, only down 0.3%, while energy, healthcare, discretionary materials, all down by more than 1%. And real estate down 0.71%. Uh, if we have a look at the ASX 20, down 0.67. So I'll probably say, and we'll have a look at this, probably think that more than likely 15 companies are down, five up. Let's have a look. Uh, oh, uh, close. 14 down, at six up. And we already know that uh, the best performing company uh, is going to be Transurban. We've also seen Macquarie Group, Aristocrat, WiseTech, and REA Group, which Makes sense because Tech's had an okay day today, and Wise Tech and RAA Group would be a significant, um, significant. Uh, well, I was going to say portion, significant, uh, whatever, be a portion of that particular sector. And NAB is up. Worst performing companies, mining companies. Oh, West Farmers is there. Uh, QBA Insurance, then mining companies and energy companies. Fortescue, Woodside, Goodman Group, real estate. Santos and Rio Tinto, Telstra still going down, and BHP still going down. All right, let's have a look at the best performing companies today. And I have a feeling some companies that have been bullish the last few weeks are still bullish. I'm um, thinking Botanics. What else? Botanics? Botanics, maybe. What else? Um, what else? I'm kind of thinking of anything else. Botanics. So let's have a look at the best performing companies today. And the best performing company is a company called Encounter Resources. And in fact, this company has a market cap of 283.55 million. I can't remember this company releasing any announcements. So let's have a look. And they did release an announcement at 8.34 a.m. High grade note. What, what is happening with Neo BM? I'm seeing a lot of announcements in regards to that. Uh, and I can't even, I haven't been able to find any charts uh, in regards to the price of Neo BM. 
So for some reason, NeoBiom or NeoBiom uh, is really popular right now. Now, I know nothing about ENR. So let's have a look at the chart for ENR, the best performing company on the ASX, ASX today. And yeah, this, I probably would define this as a breakout. This is exactly what I'm looking for, a breakout, a beautiful looking breakout, not the best looking one day candlestick, but that's okay. And I'm going to put this on my high volume spec because I'm studying these sort of potential breakouts. Uh, but the chart looks okay. And uh, before this, actually, no, the chart was going sideways, I'd say. So this could be a breakout, uh, could be an interesting trade. Okay, so that's Encounter Resources. First time I've really had Western Runter. That's to do with WA, WA1 Resources, is it? Is this company related to WA1 Resources? How did that company go today? WA1 Resources. Down 5.7%. Down again. Okay. If you know anything about Encounter Resources and WA1 Resources, is there any relationship? Because they both had the Western Runter. I thought that was a project. Maybe it's an area. In Telecare, they did a capital raising, I thought. Yeah, uh, to raise $2 million. That's interesting. The share price is up. In Telecare. And the chart for Intellicare. Yeah, no, no interest in that. Even though share price is up, I, high volume, no interest in that particular chart. I'm looking for breakouts. Encounter resources could be breakout, telecare not. And otherwise, low turnover until we get to Rincon resources um, and my holdings. There we go. So one of the companies in my top five holdings or top five announcements, not holdings, is Maya Holdings. I'm surprised Maya Holdings is up that amount. Yeah, I understand why. Uh, the market might be bullish in regards to my holdings and premium investments. And if you don't know what's happening there today, they're sort of um, deepening their relationship. But it seems to me premium investors uh, is sort of uh, um, getting rid of the worst parts of their business. And my holdings are picking up from premium investments, uh, lower quality assets. That's what I think. And for some reason, uh, the market likes my holdings today. And so I've already talked about that announcement. Uh, and otherwise, that's it. So nothing really exciting there, except account resources. Uh, there's premium investments, still up 5.26%. And my holdings in Botanics, yes, another good day, up 4.9%. We have Novonics, Novonics, Integrated Research, very happy that's up 6.5%. And the reason I'm excited about that is because uh, I bought at about 37 cents and then I added to my winning position. And that is something I'm wanting to do more and more. So I'm happy that Integrate Research is still going on a run. Uh, so let's have a look at the chart for Integrate Research. Quick look. And there it is. I bought at 37 and a half cents and that was me timing. Uh, not perfectly timing because the perfect time would have been a little bit later, maybe a month later. But then adding to my uh, winning position, that was not a good time. I could have timed that a little bit better, I think. And then when there was a good time to buy, I hesitated. And look at the share price after that. It's just share price of Integrity Research went into the short term of the average channel. That's what I'm looking for. And then as soon as it did that, it went on and tear. It's gone from, what is it, 60 cents up to 80 cents. So it's gone up 33% from the perfect time to buy integrated research uh and what else clearview now i can't remember think i can't remember doing anything on clearview name's familiar okay and now let's have a look at the worst performing companies there should be quite a few in this and you'll see the top two worst announcements of the day by far in the top losers i would be shocked if these aren't the two worst performing companies today so let's have a look see and they are Oh, yeah. Mm, I might have to change the order of these two because City Chic down 58%. Satire down 48%. I am hoping no one watching this video is a shout out of both of these companies because, wow, uh, you've had a bad day. Uh, both companies released, well, one company did a cover raising, the other company released a trading update. 
Uh, I didn't. It didn't seem that bad. Not forty eight percent down that bad, but uh, the market has spoken. And oh, there's EZ Life Sciences. That's okay. Share price has been on a tear uh, recently. And that's it. That's it. And by market cap, uh, Resmed's down twelve point eight percent. What's happening with Resmed? What's happening with Resmed? Something happened with ResMed, and I have no idea. This seems like maybe some sort of pharmaceutical company released something that might be negative, or the market thinks might be negative for uh, ResMed. So let's have a look. ResMed share price plunges 13% as weight loss results reawaken worries. Oh, the market's stupid. Ah, market is stupid. Now let's have a look at the chart for ResMed. Would be a good time to buy. I think this is another uh, another overreaction from the market. Another complete overreaction from the market. And we have Beacon Lighting. So it's another retail brain chip. Yeah, brain chip all over the place. Uh, so copper companies. Well, that's Aries Resources. And oh, Motorcycle Holdings down nine percent. Uh, that company did release a trading update today. It didn't feature into my top five announcements, but I might mention that company and maybe along with two other companies that could have made it into my top five announcements, but didn't. Okay, so let's have a look at the top five announcements of the day. And we'll start off with the few companies that didn't make it, including MTO or Motorcycle Holdings. Uh, this doesn't is not a surprise. And I thought maybe the share price wouldn't be down as low. In fact, the share price opened up higher Open up $1.20, which is interesting in itself because the company did release a trading update and they titled it EBITDA Guidance. And I assumed this was negative because of their language. So they just gave some numbers, expected numbers for EBITDA this year, 26 or between 26 and 28 million. And they just mentioned here, whilst retail unit sales have continued to hold during the second half, the company is navigating challenging market conditions with elevated costs and sustained pressures on gross profit margins. Straight away, that is telling me this company has no competitive advantage, no moat, which sort of makes sense. And current conditions are troubling this company. I'm a little bit interested by escalated costs. Uh, is that sort of pointing out that inflation is still going to be an issue? Hmm, and sustained pressure on gross product profit margins, or that could be increased competition. I don't know. But escalated costs seems to me inflation sticky. Anyway, uh, motorcycle holding, when you look at the chart for this company, my first question would be, why are you owning shares in this company? Because look at that chart. Yep, yeah, and this... I'm finding this to be more and more pertinent. The chart is telling you things. The market is telling you things. And you'll see this when we get to Setire and City Chic. Uh, why hold these companies just based off the chart? And I'm learning really good lessons over the past, or since I really started looking at charts, that charts tell you so much. And very rarely do you see negative announcements uh, released from companies whose share price are in uptrends and long uptrends. I've seen it a few times, but it doesn't happen all that often. And most of the negative announcements are released by companies whose charts are in downtrends. Now, it seems like Midasaka Holdings might have released an announcement back in December that was just as the share price was looking like it moving into an uptrend. And that was an instant sell. In my opinion, that would have been an instant sell because on that day, the share price dropped 24.7%. Share price rallied just after that. So you could have sold on the rally, but that was a negative announcement. And look what happened after that. Sort of a harbinger of what's to come for this company. Uh, is there any value in this company? I have no idea yet because the chart is negative. And if you look at the weekly chart, this is what I do sometimes when I see share price of a company in a long-term downtrend. I just look at previous support levels. And there is a support level right where the share price is at this time. And that support level 
was back in 2019, the lows we saw then. And then the next low, the next support level is the COVID-19 lows, which were about 60 cents. So still got a little bit to go for motorcycle. It doesn't mean it'll get to that level, but there is a lot of negativity in this area. Uh, we also had a company, I'm not going to really go into much detail with this company, a company called Credit Intelligence. They released the sort of announcement that you don't want to see. Profit warning. Now, there's no trading with this company. So I have a feeling this company is not even, it's in suspended. So they released this profit warning and no one cared because shares in this company are suspended and they've been suspended for a while, maybe. Continuation of suspension from quotation, legal action. Whoa. They've been suspended since the 12th of February. And they were in trading halt on the 8th of February. I'm not going to even look at this company. And let's just have a, well, the announcement anyway, just to have a look at the chart for this company. Would you or should you have been holding shares in this company before they were, no. And the question is no. Now, the answer is no, not the question. The answer is no. Why? Share price in downtrend. Yeah, simple. Again, share price or the chart would have saved you from holding a company that's in suspension and just released a profit warning if you just looked at the chart and said, no, nah, this is not a hold. No way would this be a hold. Another one was, oh, Web, Webjet. Yeah, Webjet. This was interesting. And it's interesting for me because I'm a shareholder of this company now. And one of the reasons I'm a shareholder of this company, I don't care about the share price today, is they release an update on the separation of Webbeds and Webjet B2C, business to consumer. I thought Webbeds was business to consumer. I thought the other part of Web, I don't know. Anyway, um, I the only reason I have actually taken a position in Webjet is on the separation of Webbeds and the other part of the business, which I don't care about, because then I'll have a quality part of the business and I'll probably sell the other part of the business. And I just want the quality, sort of like Treasury Wines. If they spun off Penfolds, I'd be only interested in Penfolds. That's the quality, sort of like the own investing. You want to own quality companies, not the low quality companies. Well, that's what everyone teaches or the experts teach you. You should only own quality companies. But I would definitely say Webbeds would be the quality part of Webjet. Okay, so let's get to the top five announcements of the day. The first one is Medcash. What did Medcash release today? Four year results. Oh, I didn't expect this. I didn't realize Medcash uh, released their results in June and December. So this was a little pleasant surprise. Rise getting, getting um, getting uh the uh, full year results before August, so one month before we start to see uh these sort of um results being released every single day, and I am going to be busy not only in August but the last week of July. So last week of July, August, I am going to be busy, and I love that time of year. Uh, so I've only I have not looked at the presentation. Uh, share price down two point six five percent. What I'll do is I'll have a look at the media release and I haven't actually looked at this one. I just looked at the numbers, looked at the financial statements and yeah, there was not much happening, not much growth at all. Uh, in fact, profit went down, if I remember correctly. So revenue up 0.7%, uh, underlying EBIT down 0.9%, underlying profit down 8.2%, statutory profit down 0.7%. Uh, operating cash flow up 29.5%, but you know, you can, counting accountants can fiddle with that. And total dividend of 19.5 cents per share. Uh, so uh, highlight strong results in challenging macro environment. Uh, results underpinned by diversification, resilience, and disciplined execution. So I looked at the results and went, mm, yeah, whatever. Um, Metcash, uh, is not a company that excites me, but they release results when at a time when no other company is releasing results. So that's alone uh, makes me excited. And the chart for Metcash, this is a weekly chart, which will start with a daily chart. Oh, there's a there was a bit of a sell-off today. But the chart, I look at this and go, it's just coming out of a downtrend. And I wouldn't say there's any trend right now for Medcash at all. And if you look at the weekly chart, over time, uh, share price low back in 2015 sort of corresponds to the lows we saw in Woolworths. And since then, if you did buy that low, you've actually done okay. 
share price has almost quadrupled since then. And yeah, not a company that's going to grow all that much in the future. And if you had to compare Woolworths, Coles, and Metcash, I'd probably buy Metcash just because of valuation. And in my opinion, Coles and Woolworths are way too overvalued. Uh, I don't care they're defensive. I don't care um, that. Uh, I'd only buy those two companies if the P ratio went below 14, 13. And the P ratio for both those companies are well above 20, which is ridiculous. And Metcash P ratio is probably too high too, 13.4. Might be even higher now because of these results. But yeah, no interest in Metcash, but they released results. Hence, they came in, come in at number five on the top five announcements of the day. Uh, the next uh, top announcement of the day coming in number four is two companies, Maya and Premier Investments. And you'll notice there were two. In fact, if you go through the announcements, there was a flurry of announcements released uh, from Maya and Premier Investments, but that's just ComSec. For some reason, they double up on announcements. Uh, I'll just show you this. Yeah, let's. I'll show you. I don't know. There's some sort of flaw, bug in ComSec announcements because let's go. Let's go to what time was it? 9.32. Here it is. So at 9.32 a.m., there was four announcements, two from Maya Holdings, two from Premium Investments, uh, and then there was two other announcements released from, from each company um, because each company released their own announcement. So overall, even though there was only two announcements released from each company, there were eight announcements released on the ComSec website. So there is some sort of bug flaw in the ComSec site. Um, so it looks like there's a lot of announcements released, but there's only two. And you can see that just with Maya Holdings uh, announcements here. So one announcement was Maya approach to Premier and strategy update. And the other one was from Premier Investments, proposal received from Maya Holdings. I actually didn't read Maya Holdings one because they included strategy update. Maybe this is why the market is excited about uh, the, about this announcement from Maya. So ongoing strategic review to increase Maya's profitability and drive sustainable earnings growth. Now they've mentioned here that explore a potential combination with premium investments apparel brands. So those apparel brands are Just Jeans, JJ's, Portman's, Jackie E and Doty Brands. Those particular brands don't fill me with any confidence. They're not the quality in premium investments. The quality in premium investments is Smiggle and Peter Alexander, even though I've never been into either store. Those are the quality assets that premium investments have. So Maya looks like they want to buy the less quality assets. Uh, so there's something in here that the market really likes. So the market does like this. So under the proposed combination, Maya would acquire those brands uh, in exchange for the issue of new shares in Maya to Premier. Power brands would be contributed, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Premier would distribute all of its shares in Maya to Premier shareholders. As a result, Premier would cease to own shares in Maya. But it would, yeah, okay. Under the proposed transaction, Premier shareholders would become Maya shareholders directly. If I was a premier shareholder, would I like that? I don't know. Anyway, so the market likes this because the share price of both companies is up. Uh, I know which company I would actually invest in, and it's not Maya. It's actually premium investments because of Smiggle and Peter Alexander. So let's have a look at the chart. Now, the weekly chart for Maya Holdings actually doesn't look bad. Long-term downtrend from... A decade ago, all the way through to 2020, 2021, share price reached a low of about 10 cents, actually 8.3 cents. And a little bit of volatility here, but it does look like if you look at the longer term chart from the low back in 2020, share price is easy in an uptrend. Looks like that. Although the peak in the share price back in March 2023 was quite high at $1.12. So it's pulled back since then. So let's have a look at the daily chart. So a nice one day candlestick here, but not a breakout. It's not quite a breakout. Not not there yet because of the rally in the share price and the high in March. 
So we had a high, this company had a high in March 2023 and another high in March 2024. One of it, that's a common thing for this company. There was another high in March 2022, but not 2021. No, there was a little peak in March. The time to buy this company is in January. It looks like the last four years has been a rally in the share price into March and then the sell-off after March. Yeah, I don't know. It's a four samples, four-year sample size, but anyway, not a breakout because of the rally into March. But the market likes it. Now, premium investments uh, may be a little bit different. Oh, yeah. No, I, no, I've got it. I did buy some shares in this company, and then I sold out because yeah, I thought the share price was going to rally, but now it pulled back. And now, yeah, if we didn't see that rally in the share price after they released their result, was it on the results? Yeah, something like that. Uh, if we didn't see this rally, this would be a breakout. But there might be a little bit of resistance moving forward because of shareholders who bought in this zone back in late March, early April. Definitely a better looking chart, in my opinion, and a better looking chart among the retail investors or retail companies on the ASX. Wouldn't necessarily say this is the one of the highest quality retail companies because they own those apparel brands, which I think are low quality, but they have Smiggle and Peter Alexander. So that's coming in number four. We have Maya and Premier Investments. Number three, a company I do talk about on occasion, saying eventually this company will look interesting. And that's Star Entertainment Group. Share price only down 4.7%. It was down a little bit more earlier in the day. I think it was down by 5 or 6%. And they released a trading update and earnings guidance. And it was negative. That's why the share price is down. But not as down as much as it could have been. I think there's a lot of positive, positive, lot of negative sentiment already built into the share price of this company. And that's why the share price hasn't plunged today. Uh, it's already plunged before. Uh, so trading update. Uh, and they mentioned in the earnings guidance, trading conditions have remained challenging. That's all we have to know. Uh, current training conditions reflect the challenging economic environment and cost of living pressures. Many companies are using that. And let's have a look at the chart. Four, start entertainment group. And yeah, no interest at this point in time. I'm just waiting. I think this is a case where we can be patient because there's no... I think if I think the share price wants to start consolidating, I think that's what's happening here. But uh, I, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see the low has already been reached, and now we're going to see an extended period where the share price just consolidates. And what I'd be looking for is some sort of breakout, whether it's on positive financial news or just the market expecting positive financial news, which could happen. The market is smart. Uh, as a whole, the market is quite smart, and the market would know uh, when a, a more positive uh, announcement from Star and Entertainment Group is more likely to happen. And that's why the share price might break out and move into an uptrend before the company releases that positive announcement. Doesn't always happen, but it can happen at times. So um, I think this is a case where we can just be patient. Star and Entertainment Group coming in number three with a negative trading update. Coming in at number two, I'm changing the numbering. We have Satire down 49%, not quite 50%. Satire confirms China launch, provides financial year 24 update. Now, there was some positive language and oh, some negative as well. Uh, so Dean Mintz, who has been selling shares, uh, said a few interesting things here. He was happy. Pretty sure he said he was happy. Yeah, uh, we are expecting to report. No, that's not where he says he's happy. We are incredibly pleased with these results. I wonder if they're pleased with the share price dropping 50%. I would say not. Now, these are the numbers on order of metrics, adjusted EBITDA, 32 to 35 million. So nice growth from last year. I think one of the things the company has done, I'm, I'm wondering if this might be a downgrade. Uh, I haven't actually had a look, but you can look at the half-year results. And if you do look at the half-year results, EBITDA was like $26 million, if I remember correctly. So in this particular half-year, the down considerably. And they did mention 
And I think this is another reason why the share price has dropped a lot. So this could be a little bit of a downgrade. In fact, let's have a look. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this training update here to see if they put any guidance for the year. Uh, da, 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 any guidance. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, so for the first nine months, adjusted EBITDA was 32.1 million. So in the last three months, adjusted EBITDA might be flat. Uh, yeah, so it looks like the last six months have been fairly weak for this company, which might make sense because I would assume the first six months of the calendar year are weaker uh, for most retail companies. But there was something else in here uh, even though they're pleased with the results, there's something else in here that could be concerning to the market. So they're talking about how their results, they had good growth, but notwithstanding this, during the last several weeks, as spring, summer 24 has entered the promotion period, the operating environment within global online luxury has become more challenging. Multiple listed luxury businesses have described softening demand, trends and increased promotional activity over and above the typical seasonal promotions, leading to a tougher margin environment. Setai's financial performance during quarter four uh, to date has also been impacted by these developments. So the markets saw that comment and went, oh, why would not, we would not be surprised if uh, Setire goes through a period where they don't see much growth at all. And that's why we have seen the share price of this company pull back a fair bit, 50%. I would maybe think this is an overreaction, maybe. Now, I have been a shareholder of this company, but I'm not a shareholder right now, thankfully. One of the reasons I sold out of Setire, this was not a training position, was just because of the chart. And there's a lot of negative sentiment built into the company's, um, you know, in the company. Uh, because of AFR articles and that sort of thing. So a lot of positive sentiment, even as recent as February, March, share price got as high as almost $5 in late February. And then share price has, well, it's gone from five, almost $5 to almost $1. So 75% drop roughly in share price in a fairly short period of time. And chart looks absolutely ugly. Now, another reason why I sold is the uptrend was broken on the 16th of May. So one month ago, just over one month ago, share price or the uptrend was broken. A nice developed uptrend. Now, share price has been volatile for this company through its history. Look at that. Just up and down, up and down. So this could be another down period. And the lows we saw back in 2022 were around 40 cents, about 35 cents, 40 cents. So company share price is still well off that. Um, so it's how it gets that low, but Negative sentiment could drive the share price well below where it is right now. And the one-day candlestick is pretty weak too. Share price or the the, the uh, people have been selling all day. Well, no, actually, that's wrong. Looks like the low was reached about 1.10 1, 1, 10 p.m. at just under $1.10. And looks like the low has been reached. And share price has been gradually grinding higher since then. But that's just one minute chart. Uh, who knows? Tomorrow we could see renewed selling again. All right, so that's um, Setire. Coming in at number one, we have, I'm hoping the company share price is down by more than 50% because I did change the ordering. Yeah, City Chic is down 58.33%. I am hoping there is no one out there owning both of these shares, let alone uh, just one of these shares. Uh, I think I said that wrong way. I'm hoping no one out there is owning one of these companies, let alone both of these companies. Just imagine if you own both Shitty Chic and Setire. Both starts with C. Okay, so this company went to a trading halt on the 18th of June. And I can't remember what the trading halt was for. What they said, was it a couple of raising? I thought it was a couple of raising, yeah. They, they actually, this was for a couple of raising and divestment of Avenue. And a trading, did I mention trading update in this as well? Can't remember. Anyway, so then uh, they announced 
the avenue sale, the divestment, the capital raising, and the financial year 24 trading update. All in the one page. Share price was 30 cents, I believe. Yeah, 30 cents. This was a significant discount. I'm pretty sure it was a 50% discount. So the capital raising was done at 15 cents, and the trading update was pretty negative. Uh, so City Sheet confirms that forecast group sales for financial year 24 are down 30%, uh, and they are loss making. Pro forma adjusted EBITDA, whatever, uh, post AASB 16, just say it's profit. Uh, loss of 9.3 million. So more than likely, the loss is going to be even more than that. So a negative trading update, capital raising done at a significant discount. I'm pretty sure it was 15, 15 cents. I'm just going to uh, verify that. And this divestment of Avenue for $18 million, they bought it. I'm trying to remember when they bought it. It's like 2019 for more than $18 million. So they made a loss on this... Um, uh, Avenue and the capital raising price was for some reason I've just got 15 cents in my mind. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, they actually include the training update here. Debt restructure. Here we are. Details of the equity raising and 142.04. Where's the price? 15 cents. Down here. New shares under equity raising will be issued at a price of 15 cents. 50% discount to the last close of 30 cents. But when I see the share price fall below the cup raising price, and it's fallen quite a bit below, uh, 12.5 cents, that's not a good sign. That's not a good sign at all. Would I be interested in this company right now? No, 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 no. Uh, no, this, I wouldn't say this company is under threat, but no. Uh, let's have a look at the daily chart for City Chic. And this is just like Setire. If you look at the daily chart, there's been times recently when it looked like the share price wanted to break into an uptrend. Uh, in February, share price on this company went for a nice little run, but that run fizzled out, fizzled out fairly quickly. And then the share price moved into the downtrend. So there's actually no reason to be owning this company before this particular cup raising and trading update. So again, if you just follow the chart, I use technical analysis, no reason to be on this chart. So you felt no pain today. There would be some investors out there who maintain a holding in this company, just wishing and hoping the share price would turn around. And it didn't happen. So that's the announcement of the day. Share price down almost 60%. City chic. Uh, so a few charts I'm going to show you. First one is Bravira. So I sold Bravira. So I bought it $1. That was 99 and a half cents. There it is. And I've sold, and share price is down today, 6.5%. So I sold at $1.07. So I'm happy with that. And the main reason I bought on a, a, a sort of a support level, a uh, round number, a dollar, and I thought there would be a bounce. And there was a bounce. And it went from a dollar to a dollar 12 cents. And I went, I'm not sure if I like these sort of setups. And the other reason was share price is below the 150 day moving average, which is this solid black line. And as soon as I, and, and the other thing is the share price hit the short term moving average channel, which has turned red and it started to go lower. Uh, so we are now seeing a little bit of pressure on review risk solution share price. Wouldn't be surprised to see this fall below $1 now. Anyway, so I've decided, yeah, one of the rules I want to probably follow more often than not is only buy companies whose share price is above 150 day moving average. And I'm going to use other rules as well to improve my timing. And based off my rules, I should never have bought Brevira Solutions in the first place at 99 and a half cents. So I will take that 7% profit after I sold out. Brevira, and I bought some IDX, some integral diagnostics. There is a merger between internal diagnostics and capital health. And I just saw the share price today get to $2.60, just above $2.60. Uh, that's an important level. And I could have waited, been a little bit more patient just to see what the share price does the next few days. But it looks like this uh, company share price is trying to break out. So this is me trying to time it a little bit better. And I wouldn't be surprised to see the share price of this company move into an uptrend now.
a more well-developed longer-term uptrend. And again, share price above both moving average channels and also above the 150-day moving average. So this is sort of the setup I'm waiting for. Now, preferably, I'd like to also time it with a breakout on financial or positive financial news. Now, this was on, it's not really a breakout, particularly when you compare it to the other company, Capital Health. This could have been the better play, but I do prefer in, in integral diagnostics over capital health. Anyway, so that's what I bought today. I was thinking of buying Helios. That's on my radar as well. But you see the share price has just moved above the 150-day moving average. But the problem is the longer-term moving average is still above the shorter term. Shorter term has turned green. So there's still longer-term negative sentiment in this company. So I do think there is a question whether this little momentum change can continue uh, into a well-developed uptrend. I'm a little bit wary about that. So this is me thinking I am need to be a little bit more patient with this one. I don't want to rush this one. So I have at times rushed into these sort of trades and then bad things happen. So I am definitely have this company on my watch list at this point in time. The other company was um, Regal Partners. Why Regal Partners? So this is an uptrend, developing uptrend, and we have seen a pullback into the short-term moving average channel and a pretty good one-day candlestick, by the way. So this is like a little, what, what they call a hammer. Um, so RPL, RPL. I might take a position in RPL on, in the closing auction. 3.22, yeah, might do that. Time is now 4 p.m. Closing auction is now in play. Uh, if you have any questions, any thoughts, leave your those in the comment section of this video. Now, the problem with Regal is a pretty big volume in the last two days. And it went down 7% or 8% on really big volume. So that would be a little bit concerning. Mm. So I'm going to have to think about this. Anyway, if you have any questions, any thoughts, leave those in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day.